Hello sweeties, welcome to a painting video. I am currently learning how to do palette knife paintings. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna do today in this vid. It's a piece that I've called the garlic forest. And that's because it's based on a photo I took of a forest full of wild garlic. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a sec. I actually have some footage of it too, I think. We'll have to take a look. Um, so I haven't done palette knife painting before and we're gonna see this whole piece start to finish, little 10 minute, 11 minute vid. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, I am very happy with how this one turned out. This is only my second palette knife painting I've done. It is in acrylic paint so that it has lots of nice texture and it dries pretty quick. And um, I'm using a reference photo and using my easel and all these nice chunky paints. Um, and I'm mixing a lot of my own colors for this because I'm trying to match it to the tones of the photo. But as you can see, the canvas that I'm working on is actually one that I painted um, some really bright neon colors. And I hung it up on the wall in my bedroom like that for a long time because I couldn't figure out what I wanted it to be the underpainting for. So that was never intended to be the top layer. I just threw a bunch of neon pastel, well not pastel at all, they're just neons onto this canvas. And it is an oval shaped canvas, which is a bit unusual, but I like it. And I actually really like how little bits of the color come through in this piece. I'm really enjoying the process of painting with the palette knife because it's very much a fusion, I feel, of like sculpting and painting. And I do like sculpting, even though it's not something I do a ton. Um, but you have to think about painting with the palette knife in a little bit of a different way. Um, you really have to think in layers, and that's something I didn't necessarily do super well in this piece, but obviously I am still learning. Um, and this piece is just for me, like it's just a picture of a nice memory. So uh, the garlic forest, this is based on a photo I took on a trip last year to England and I went to Laycock Abbey, which is in Wiltshire, down on the, sort of on the south coast. It's very close to the edge of the Cotswolds. I went there with my mom and we had a really fun trip. The whole trip was amazing. It was like two weeks and um, I've been to England a lot. I've lived there uh, twice in my life and I'm very fond of it. So this was a birthday trip for me and we went there and had a, just a magnificent time. And the Abbey was a beautiful property and there was a forest you kind of could walk through around there. Um, it's, it's not like a, I live in Nova Scotia, so forests look really different here versus there. It was a very manicured sort of uh, garden forest, I guess you could say. But I do have a little bit of footage of it, which I will put over the screen at some point. So you can kind of see what uh, what the place looked like. But the forest was full of wild garlic, which was not, um, I, I mean, I didn't really smell it when I was walking around, but that's what my mom told me the flowers were. And if you pick it or the leaves, like you can smell the garlic right on it. It smells really nice and tastes pretty good too. I think, uh, yeah, I definitely had some. But it makes these beautiful white flowers and that's what was really, predominant in the photograph and it's funny because the photograph I don't think is very overwhelming like it's kind of just a low saturation photo of a bunch of plants but I don't know I like the composition and I'm very happy with how this painting turned out based on it so that's that's about that and um yeah so this is only my like I said my only second palette knife painting I think I'm getting better I'm learning more techniques I'm watching videos I'm practicing and I'm working on another one already actually I finished this one and moved right on to another so we'll see where I go with it but I'm really enjoying getting away from digital art not that I don't do that all the time still I definitely do but it's fun to try some physical mediums and that's what I kind of grew up doing right I've been doing art for I mean I was in like art classes when I was a kid so I've been doing it basically my whole life but um, didn't really take it seriously as a career until I could do digital art because it just opened up like a world of commercial possibility but it's really nice to go back to the traditional mediums and have a little bit of fun with my art rather than feeling like I need to make something to put on a greeting card or to sell or anything like that and it's also very fun watching this footage back and seeing how much of nothing it looks like for a really long time. Um, I have definitely learned that palette knife painting is a very trust the process kind of medium, which is cool. Um, it's cool to do something like that where you feel like you're making a big mess and then eventually you look at it from like across the room and you're like, oh, that looks exactly like 
I envisioned. I don't know, I kind of feel like maybe I found my medium here, like I'm really enjoying it, but uh, you can be the judge when I'm done this painting. Don't judge it at this stage, it doesn't look like much yet, but um, yeah. So recently I posted on Instagram asking about a little Q&A if anyone had any cues I could A on a video on a voiceover, so I thought maybe I'll just grab a couple of those for a little voiceover here while I keep you company while we watch this video. Does that sound good? Okay. Where did I... Hold on, let me find them. All right, the first question that I have to answer is, how do you decide on new products to create for your art business? Um, well, the first place I usually start is with Pinterest because I get a lot of inspiration there for types of products. Um, I don't really get a lot of art inspiration there per se because I'm trying really hard to figure out my own style and I find I do get quite easily influenced there. But if you can look past that and just appreciate the products that are being made, that is a good place to get inspiration. Um, once I get an idea, I'm trying to stick with things that are either paper products or um, relatively easy to manufacture myself right now. I don't really want to outsource any manufacturing um, just for a variety of reasons, but also I really just like making stuff. Um, so when I do that, I will then take like a word doc or a notepad or something and break down all the costs of making that item, like everything I need to buy for supplies um, or things I need to use already. So if it involves paper, like when I design notepads, I will um, add in the number of pages and how many cents it costs per page. Like I'll get really down to the, to the wire and then I will either do a test run making that thing or it, if I have to buy something expensive I, I will just guess but I try and estimate the labor that will go into creating that thing as well to figure out how much I can sell it for and if all those numbers make sense like it's going to be worthwhile to put that effort in to manufacture it um, then I will usually do like a very small batch if I can manage it um, especially like I said if it's something I don't need to buy a ton of new materials for um, I will prioritize things like that and then I will take them to an in-person market, usually as a test run, or I will post about it on social media and put them on my store, but I am a little bit slow about store updates, so um, usually I test them out in person first. And if people like them, then I'll go with that product, but that's basically my process. Um, I'm very focused on the cost versus profit of items, so therefore I'm very selective about what I do actually offer. I think that's probably it. Um, I'll also go out to physical stores that are places where I think my products would fit really well. I don't actually have any wholesale um, cases or uh, clients right now, but um, I'll go to the stores and see what they're selling and I find that very inspirational as well. So sometimes you just have to do a little bit of legwork, a little in-person looking around to get the ideas. Um, and yeah, that's probably it. Another question that I got is, did you go to art school or did you go to school for art? And if not, what did you study? Um, I did not go to art school. I threatened to go to art school a lot. And I think it's because I always really in my heart knew I wanted to do this, but um, felt like I didn't know how to make a career out of it. And I was very afraid of um, ending up with skills that I couldn't use uh, to support myself. Ironically, I don't use anything. I, <laughs> I don't technically use anything that I learned in school because what I studied was classics. So my specialty was in um, classical reception. So Latin literature and how it interacts with Cold War era science fiction. That was my PhD topic. Um, I did not finish my PhD, I dropped out of it because I got really sick and had to do that, look after that. Um, and then when I got better, my doctor was like, hey, you um, were miserable and this is part of what stressed you out so much you got sick. So uh, I didn't go back, but I really have a lot of mixed feelings about that, that I've, I think I've actually made a lot of peace with. But before that, yeah, I did my undergrad. Um, I did study abroad and I studied English literature when I was studying abroad and I did a master's of classics, and then I did a master's of English literature, um, and then the, the PhD. So so art is not, like, like, I actually studied a lot of classical art, like um, sculpture and things like that, pottery designs, but they, it wasn't like hands-on making art. I only did one university class on that uh, very first semester of undergrad, and I really enjoyed it, but 
I, my head was not in the game at the time. I just wasn't, I, I just needed to mature more before I could appreciate doing this as a career. And yeah, that was, that's my, that's my background, but actually I'm, we're done this painting now. Look at this. I'm so thrilled with it. And I think the flowers turned out especially nice. There was all these dandelions and buttercups, um, in the foreground of the picture. And I just, I'm just really in love with the texture that comes with this palette knife type of painting. Um, it's just really, I don't know, you want to just like touch it, right? But it looks really great from afar. I'm just really excited with this whole process and having a new medium to play with. Well, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I think I hope you thought it was cool because I really do um, and like how the piece turned out. If you like doing art with me, hanging out, please do subscribe. Um, I make lots of content about my art business or just making art in general, and I'd be happy to have you around. Um, all right. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.